seems like every time I preach on something, then uh, the next week, you know, Satan does his best to try to rob me of whatever it is I've tried to share with you. Uh, it's just one of those situations where you begin to say, you know, there's got to be something different. Uh, there's got to be something better. There's got to be something uh, more in life. And uh, so when that situation comes your way, you begin to, to think about it. You think, well, how can I keep peace within me? And we talked about that to a great degree last week. We talked about the way in which we find peace. We stand firm in the Lord, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, was the first thing that we observed. Second thing is that we live in harmony. We try to get along with one another. The third thing is that we help one another, which he talks about in verse 3. Verse 4 and verse 5, he says, we rejoice in the Lord and we bask in his presence. We want God to be constantly a part of our life and a part of our relationship uh, with him. And then we seek the true source of peace. Verse 6, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, I had a lot of people come up to me and say, boy, that was, that was good to hear, Robert. I, I needed that. I needed that encouragement. I needed that strength. And, and here you are trying to live at peace. And then comes those storm clouds. There comes those things that begin to thwart you, that try to, to take what God has promised to you away from you. And so really today we're going to talk about the thief of peace. I've always wondered as I've looked at the construction of this particular section of Philippians chapter 4. Why Paul immediately, after he talks about that we can have the peace which passes all understanding, that which is guarded in Christ Jesus, he immediately says, these things are important for you to think about. These things are important for you to let dwell within your mind. I wondered, why in the world, Paul, do you immediately go to the things that you think about in this text? And I think I have come to an understanding that Paul says the thief of peace can be what's up here. The thief of peace is what grabs a hold of your mind and overwhelms you. Notice what the proverb writer says. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as a man thinks in his heart... That's the way he is. I've looked at this passage for years and years and years, and I've even preached it, and I've begun to understand that this really is the centrality of the way in which we can tell what sort of character a man is or a person is. What do you think about? What do you think about? What do you spend your idle moments contemplating. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm in, in idle gear, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about Scripture, thinking about things of God. Sometimes, though, I'm thinking about things I really shouldn't think about. And it's important for us to realize that if we have allowed our hearts and allowed our minds to think about things that we really shouldn't be thinking about, we're really damaging our peace. I've known some folks that, that, that had difficulty in, in really being a spiritual person, and you begin to ask them, or they ask you, you know, how can I be a more spiritual person? You begin to ask them, what, what, do, you, what do you read? I had a man one time tell me, he says, oh, I read every dime novel that comes along. And I said, there's your problem right there. 
I said, how much time do you spend reading your dime novels compared to reading the scriptures? Oh, I don't know. I read the scriptures once every now and then. I read those other things all the time. What are you feeding within yourself? That gets us to the second passage of importance. Luke chapter 11 and verse 39. But the Lord said to the Pharisees, Now you Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but inside of you, you are full of robbery and you're full of wickedness. You see, the problem is, is that the internal man is what really counts. So what are you feeding yourself? We go to another passage, and in that passage we find that Jesus is talking about this very principle. He's, he's talking about what goes into a man. And the things that go into a man are the things then that proceed out of the man. And he says, the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. And these defile the man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. These are the things which defile a man. There's three lessons that we learn from this. Number one, the way you think is the way you are. Stop and think about that. The way you think is the way you are. Have you ever done something that you thought was uncharacteristic? Maybe you were caught off guard and you, you said something that, that you shouldn't have said. Where'd that come from? That's the thought that you usually have, isn't it? Where, where'd that come from? Truth of the matter is, you thunk it. You thought it. It's something maybe that had come into you. It had harbored there. And the truth is, what you think about, the way you think, is the way you really are. As a man thinks within himself, that's the way the man really is. Isn't that what the proverb writer told us? There's a second lesson that we learn. Externals do not necessarily reflect the real man. Uh, the Pharisees that Jesus was talking about, what, what was he saying? He, he's saying, look, he says, you make sure that you comb your hair, you shave your face, you make sure that your clothes are clean, you make sure that everything on the outside looks good. He says, but here's the problem. That's just external. And the external is not going to accomplish God's purpose. The external is not going to accomplish God's will in our lives. Externals do not necessarily reflect the real man. What reflects the real man? Well, it's, it's, it's what's up here that comes out of here that's reflected in our actions. Well, then the third lesson that we learn from the scriptures that we've read. Great care should be exercised on what we bring into our minds. People are always recommending books to me. And, and if you've ever re recommended a book to me, one of the things I'll probably do is say, well, well kind of what's it about? What what, 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 what's there? And some people will say, Robert, this book has got a, a, an interesting message, but there is a couple of sections that, that are just a little bit whatever. Sometimes I'll read it. Sometimes I won't. I've had people recommend books to me, and I read the thing or started reading the thing and said, huh, I can't read this. I, I don't want this within my heart, within my mind. I, I have enough trouble as it is. All of the messages and all of the influences that we have in our society, all of the things that, that are just constantly bombarding us, I, I, I have trouble as it is. Television programs. Movies. Last night, Sue and I were at the grocery store late, and there's... This lady up in front of us checking out, and she had about four magazines. And, of course, you know, I can't resist not looking and seeing what's she going to read. 
It was smut one, smut two, smuttier, smuttier three, and real smut four. Oh my, lady, please. Please, she had, she had two children with her, one fairly large and one not so large. And I thought, hmm, do you really want that? Feeding your mind? You, you, you really want to rob the peace that God has promised to you? By, by putting that within your heart and within your mind? Thinking evil thoughts. You know, sometimes those thoughts come to us and we have to deal with them. We, we have to make sure that they don't reside there. And, and we live, as we've talked about so much lately, in this very sensual world in which so many, many, many evil messages are, are transmitted to us. But we don't have to dwell on it. We need to clean it out. So great care needs to be exercised on what we bring into our minds. And that's why I think that Paul says, here's the antidote. Here is the thing that helps you to deal with the dark clouds. Here's the thing that makes sure that if you're getting the peace of God within your heart and within your life, you can keep the peace of God with you there. Let's look at the text together. Whatever is true, brethren, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report or good repute, if there's any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Second time the promise is made here in the chapter that peace will be ours. But what's it based upon? It's based upon how we think. How we think. You know, I was looking at these words last night as I was looking at this particular slide, and it realized that these words provide a check and balance system. There are a lot of things that we can look at that are true. But they're smutty. They're not something that we need to spend time with. So we need to think about those things which are true, but they also need to have the quality of being honorable. So if we're thinking about the things that are true and the things that are honorable, then we're going to be casting out some of those things that are not honorable, even though they may be true. And he says we need to look at those things that are right. And as we look at the things that are right, we're going to find that those things that are not right may be true, but they need to be cast out. Because honorableness and rightness need to go into play. And then there's purity. There may be things that are true and in certain contexts are honorable and in certain contexts are right, but if they're not going to lead us to purity, Paul says we might not want to think about those things. Those things that are true, those things that are honorable, those right, pure, those things that are lovely. An ice cream cone that's free that's lovely <laughs> think about that someone who is presenting a, a worthwhile character example or illustration to us that's lovely you get the point of what Paul is trying to say He's saying those things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and are of good report. These are the things that we need to think about. In fact, he goes on to say, dwell on these things. You remember the psalmist talking about, on the law of the Lord, Psalm 1 verse 2, on the law of the Lord, the righteous man meditates, I put righteous man in there, but that's what the assumption is, 
meditates upon the law of the Lord. It, it, it's his constant companion. It's what he, he's constantly thinking about, allowing to penetrate his heart and penetrate his mind and penetrate his life. That's what Paul is saying to us here. He's saying, take those things that are true and counterbalanced by honorable and counterbalanced by right and counterbalanced by pure and counterbalanced by lovely and counterbalanced by good report and you dwell on these things. You think on these things. <clears throat> Failure to do so is that we might find that the peace that God wants us to have can be robbed from us. Can be robbed from us. You see, the ability to stand firm in the Lord, the ability to live in harmony with one another, the ability to help one another that we talked about last week, the ability to bask in God's presence... The ability to seek the true source is totally dependent upon what we think about. What we think about. So if we think about this, there's power. If we think about God and His righteousness, there's power. If we think, dwell on the things that are true and honorable, there's power. You see, that's the promise. That's the promise. That God gives to us. Verse 9 concludes what we're going to say this morning. As the Apostle Paul says, The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, Paul says. You look at my illustration. You look at the way in which I trust God with my thoughts and with my actions because of my thoughts. And what's the end result? God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. I want the peace that passes all understanding to constantly be mine. I want it to be yours. But we're going to have to make sure that we think the way we ought to think to have that power within our lives.